Hey guys, Dan here with Hardly Proof Programming. Today we're going to be taking a look at our quest system. This is episode 3 of the Make an RPG series where we started working on our quest system. Uh, we're going to be working on the collection objective a bit more and we're going to be expanding on the iQuest objective interface some. But first I want to do a quick overview of what we worked on last time. I want to show kind of or give an idea of a roadmap, uh, if you will, for where we're going to be going over the next several videos. I want to take some time to answer your guys' questions from the last video. And then we'll jump right in and start doing a lot of programming. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in the last video, as an overview, what we worked on was the iQuest text and identifier classes and interfaces. Here I'm in the iQuest text interface where I wanted to be a bit more descriptive. iQuest or excuse me, quest information was too general in my eyes. It didn't describe what it really was doing. And so I just I divided it up and then we made iQuest text and iQuest identifier and we set those up to be strings and basically integers right and depending on how big these are uh, later on we might be able to make them smaller and turn them into structures if we want uh, but for now we're going to leave them as quests and then we created the uh, interfaces for them so that they all stay the same so once we have that or once we did that we went over and we switched to objectives now we said in the quest class here uh, we want objectives and we wanted them so that we can create all different types of objectives, whatever your heart can come up with. And the idea behind that was uh, originally where we have a objective class that inherits the I quest objective interface, and then we'll use that objective class to kind of build other objectives. And I decided that having that base objective class wasn't needed, and we'll just use the interface of the contract and say, hey, all these types of objectives that, inter that implement iQuest objective need to have these general methods and get in these properties so that we can access them and do the things that we need to do. Uh, and when we did that, or when we decided that, I said, well, we'll create a collection objective and then we'll create a location objective. And that handles quite a few objectives that you might experience in a quest in an RPG. Now, if you guys come up with other ones, again, let me know in the comments down below. But those are the two that we'll, we'll be working on. Uh, and then when we did that, we created this list here that can store all of our objectives. And then we started working on the collection objective, which I'm going to just talk about more in this video. Uh, but before I do that, let me show you a roadmap of kind of what you can expect of what we'll be working on over the next several videos. Uh, basically, what I want to have um, working to kind of prove that all this works is an in-game object, which will be a scroll attached to like a pillar or something the player should be able to walk up to that scroll and they'll have this thing bobbing above its head or above its object I guess saying hey there's a quest available here you can walk up to it click on it like right click on it accept the quest and you'll be presented with two objectives right you'll have one mandatory objective that says collect 10 pieces of meat you'll have one bonus objective that says hey go to point A or from point A go to point B and that'd be a bonus objective. What we want to see that happens when this all works, and it will work, when it all works, we want to be able to collect the 10 pieces of meat first, go up to this scroll and see it bounce, the question mark bouncing saying, hey, you finished the quest, you finished the quest, and be able to turn it in, but we don't want to turn it in until we go ahead and finish the bonus. At that point, we should be able to get a bigger reward, which is symbolized by the money symbol here. Once all that works, then we can go and start refining, refactoring, and working on some other things. So that's what I would like to do. This is, again, this is a layout of what you can expect. One big quest with two objectives and we'll go from there. So before we start programming or while we start, while we program I guess, <clears throat> we can talk about a few things. One question which is a good question and keep them coming if you have them was why, why use a getter without a setter? Don't you need to have the program set the values? And yes to answer your question, the, the program should set the values somewhere. Uh, in my case, I'm not using a public set for these. I'm going to be using a constructor, right? So this public collection objective uh, is a constructor where I set the title, I set the description, I select the item to collect. I don't need to set them publicly uh, through a, a get set situation. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm not going to be creating, ran most likely, I'm not going to be creating a whole bunch of objectives and changing their titles and descriptions randomly in the program somewhere. I want to do that only through one controlled method called collection objective where we create it. Now if you come to an instance where you want to change the title or the description, I recommend creating some sort of pri uh, 
some sort of method that does it and you can kind of control it some more. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, you, you can of course make a set for it. Uh, in my case, I wanted to create some sort of way, some other sort of way to do it without going the set route. But what, whatever you'd like to do, you can do it. Hopefully that answers your question. I'm going to be doing it in the constructor. Uh, if we need it later on, we can definitely add it. Uh, now, the other idea that was brought up, which I really like, excuse me, I hit the mic, uh, was creating a way to randomly generate quests. And that is definitely something we can look at and do after we create the quest system itself, or we can include it at the end. Uh, but basically, it's pretty simple. Once we have a whole bunch of different collection, or a whole bunch of different objectives, we can create a method say, hey, create a quest with 12 objectives. And it can randomly create those 12 objectives, whether they be collection objectives or location objectives. Uh, and then we'll just follow a whole bunch of rule sets that we can set to say, hey, uh, the amount can only be between 5 and 50. The items can range from carrots to enemies, the, you know, whatever it may be. We can definitely do that, and we will do that uh, after we've kind of proven that our quest system works. So having said all that, let's go ahead and start programming. Let's work on the iQuest objective interface. There's a few things that I want to add, a couple properties and a method that I'd like to add. Uh, and then we'll go back to the collection objective class and actually work on some more code. So the first thing I want to add is a property. It's going to be a bool and it's going to be is complete. So we want to be able to set some sort of bool in the objectives telling the quest when it asks it, whether or not it's finished or not. Are we done? Are we finished? If it is, great. If it's not, we'll keep going. Right, we want some way to do that, and we're going to do that with that bool. The other one we want to know is: is this objective a bonus objective? Right, the quest doesn't care uh, whether or not it's a, it's a bonus or not, but the objective should. The objective needs to know whether or not it's a bonus. Uh, and then, lastly, the other method. Well, we're not going to include it in the interface, but we're going to be using a. Uh, we're going to override the two-string method, like I talked about in the last video. So here we have our two. <clears throat> excuse me properties we have is complete and is bonus and then we have the other ones that we had in the last video so let's go ahead and start working on those and creating those uh, immediately when you go back to collection objective you're gonna have an error so go to that little light bulb again and hit implement interface it's gonna add the two properties that we created is bonus and is complete we need to go ahead and add some private members for those so we'll say private bool is complete we'll say private bool is bonus And we're going to add one more here, and it's going to be a string, and it's going to be called verb. And I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, but let's go ahead and add is complete down below. So instead of throwing this exception, we're going to say return is complete. And finally, we'll say return is bonus. All right. We've set those properties. Now we have these two methods. I want to create the method uh, public override method for two strings. So we're going to say public override string to string, right? Uh, and instead of returning, we're going to return a string, which we're going to tackle in just a moment. But first, we need to go back to our constructor and set a few variables, right? So in collection objective, we now have one called is complete and is bonus. Well, we need to say whether or not this is a bonus, and we need to include that in our constructor. So we're going to say bool, uh, and we'll label it bonus. All right, and then we'll say in our constructor, we'll say is bonus. So we're setting it. We're going to set it equal to bonus, not a bool. There we go. Uh, and finally, we have the verb. We have this verb that I would like to cache and save in the collection objective so we can use it elsewhere, and that elsewhere will probably be in our two string method. So we need to save it. So we're going to say uh, verb is equal to title verb. All right. So now we can use it elsewhere. Uh, but there's one glaring problem. We haven't changed the is complete. And we need to set that equal to false because as soon as you get this objective, it's not going to be complete uh, yet. We can perform a check, though, to do that. So we'll do is complete is equal to false. And I've also changed this from feathers to meat because we're going to be collecting meat instead of feathers. I couldn't draw a feather, so I could draw meat. So I draw meat, and that's why we're going to be collecting meat instead, if you guys are curious. Uh, but anyways, here's our constructor. I do want to show you something kind of cool if you don't know. If you hit the uh, forward slash three times in Visual Studio, it creates uh, some XML code here where you can actually set a summary and parameter descriptions. So let's say you were going to call this method. 
uh, you want to say this meth I guess this is a this constructor builds a collection objective right just a little bit more information so if you're working on a team and you created this someone knows hey this is what this does tile verb uh, say describes the type of collection maybe total amount uh, amount required to complete objective right so this is like 10 for us item item to be collected description describe uh, what will be collected and finally bonus is this a bonus objective now you're wondering where do you see this uh, let's go ahead and create in unity a test class I've already done it actually uh, attach it to your camera so just drag it to your main camera you can see I have two here let me delete one so we have tests I'm gonna open that up and we'll type some stuff in here the reason why I'm doing this is just to show you uh, what that does so we'll say Q uh, excuse me we need to actually add our library so we'll say using quest system under start we'll say I quest objective all right that's our interface we'll call it QB which would be the quest objective we're gonna create we're gonna create a new collection objective and I hit that and you highlight over it you should be able to read it say this constructor builds a collection objective okay that's helpful well what's the first one right so when we say the first one it says it's a title verb uh, and title verb describes the type of collection well we want to create a collect or get we'll say gather right that's our verb it's a gather uh, total amount this is amount required to complete objective we're gonna say 10 it's an integer our item will be an item we'll call it don't worry about it we'll add it uh, our description says describe what will be collected and we're gonna say collect or let's say gather 10 meat okay pretty simple and then finally bonus this is not a bonus so let's set it equal to false uh, and we'll add our semicolon now we need to create that so we're gonna go ahead and say public game objects item there we go we got rid of that error okay so now we created a, Q, uh, a quest objective and you know QB doesn't make any sense we're gonna say QO quest objective makes a little bit more sense so QO new collection objective I showed you kinda how those parameters work so you can kinda read about it some more uh, but let's go back into quest object or collection objective and add our two string method here so our two strings is going to override the generic one that comes with uh, that's in C sharp, right? And what we want to do is create some sort of string. I've already created it, so I'm going to copy and paste it here just so I save some time. Uh, but basically, I'll explain it when I get it in here. So I wanted a string that says ten or zero out of ten meet uh, gathered, right? So I want to create a way to do that because on the side of the UI I would like it to list my objectives and then list the current amount versus the total amount so our current amount would be zero at the start of the total amount that we need <clears throat> excuse me plus the name of what we want to collect so whether it's honeybee or monkey bees as the comment wrote or it's meat as we're gonna be using uh, and then the verb, which is what we pass in, which is gather, and we're going to say gathered. We're going to add an ed to it because we're collecting it, right? Uh, and now if I go hit QS to save, control S to save, I go back and do our test class. I can do a debug statement where I say debug.log. We can say QO, quest objective, to string, hit enter, control S to save. If I go into Unity and I press play, we'll see that post up in the console here. Maybe not. Oh, we don't have a, excuse me, we need a, a uh, game object. So let me create an empty game object. We're going to call it meet. Go to main camera. Sorry about that. There we go. Meet. Press play. Now we say, oh, it worked. 0 10 meet gathered. Perfect. 
Now, what's the other thing we need to do? Well, we need to go ahead and look at our check progress. How do we check our progress? Well, we're going to be checking our progress using an if statement. We're going to say if current amount is greater than or equal to our collection amount, then what? Well, then we want to go ahead and set is complete to true. And then let the quest do whatever it needs to do regarding that. Else, we can do an else statement and say else uh, is complete is false. Right, so we can just do another thing like that, and we can go up here and actually call the check progress method instead of uh, hard coding in is complete is equal to false. We'll let the program decide whether or not it's false or not. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys real quick in our quest class a way to kind of check all of our uh, objectives. So we know we're going to have an on update method for our as an event, right? So when this quest is updated, something is happening, and what we want to do is check to see if the quest is completed. So we're going to actually create a method. I'm going to just make it private for now. We're going to say private uh, check. This would be again check progress, right? Uh, we'll say check overall progress. And what this is going to do, it's going to run a for loop. Now, if you hit for and hit uh, tab twice, it's going to create the for loop for you. Uh, it's going to set up the structure for it. So what we want to do is have a for loop, run it through the objectives uh, list dot count, right? So that's the amount of that's in the list. But we want it to go through all the objectives. And we want to check and say, hey, for uh, if objectives dot excuse me, of I, meaning we're going to get the index, value, we're going to get the actual objective, uh, is complete, right? That's the Boolean value. We want to get it, and we're going to say if that's false, uh, false, and so if the objective is complete is equal to false, and I guess we could check to first see if it's a bonus, but we'll say and it's a bonus, or and it's not a bonus, excuse me, so we'll say objectives i is bonus equals false, oh, equals false, then we can break, we can return really. Uh, and you know what I would like to do, we're gonna make this a bool and we're gonna say is complete and what we'll do is if this is returns fall or if this if this returns true, so if this is all true, saying, hey, we're not complete and we're false, then we're going to say return false. Otherwise, return true. All right, so we're going to jump in here. We're going to run through our objectives. And if all of our objectives are false, meaning they're not complete and it's, and it's not a bonus, then we're going to return false and say, hey, we're not finished our quest. Otherwise, return true. We are finished our quest. Therefore, we can get our reward, right? This means, let's add the comment there. Get reward. Fire on complete event. All right. That's what I want to show you guys this video. It's kind of running on a little bit longer than I wanted. Hopefully, you guys learned something. If you guys got any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. Otherwise, all this is available for free to download off the GitHub, which again, the link is in the description below. Otherwise, I'll talk to you guys next time.